Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, that's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. I think we're heading to your local racetrack for this week's show. Yeah, I plan on being out there at Churchill Downs on Saturday. A big card, a big weekend, closing weekend uh, for early summer here. And Matt, this is what I call the best race of early summer. It's the $1 million Stephen Foster at Churchill Downs. This is going to be race 11 on that big Saturday card, Matt. It is nine furlongs, as I said, $1 million for this grade one race at Churchill Downs. Uh, we have a, a solid field of nine older males taking to the main track under the famed Twin Spires. You ready to roll, Matt Shipman? I am ready, Brian. All right, let's start from the rail out. Pyrenees, Pyrenees, Matt, is on a roll. Uh, Brian Hernandez Jr. will uh, step aboard this son of Into Mischief. And uh, after a slightly slow start to his career, Matt, he's he's been on a, uh, a serious roll. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and for a trainer in Sharif DeVoe, who is also on quite a roll, she really is having a fantastic uh, uh, early summer spring meeting at Churchill Downs. Yeah, four in a row for Pyrenees, including a win in the Pimlico special last time. That's a grade three on Preakness weekend. Yeah, it was Preakness weekend, and it was a bit of a surprise because another horse in this race, Kings Barnes, was a pretty heavy favorite. And uh, Pyrenees wore him down late in that mile 316th Pimlico special. That was his first stake start. Uh, he had been running in maiden races and allowance races uh, it, up until that point. Uh, as I said, it took him five races to win his maiden. He's now won four in a row including that Pimlico special. This, of course, will be another step up in class for the four-year-old son of Into Mischief for Sherry DeVoe. Uh, number two, Matt, is the horse that I expect will be the favorite. Uh, first mission you see here on our morning line is a pretty clear favorite at 9-5. to five. Florent Giroux has been doing good things on first mission of late, Matt. He's won two in a row for trainer Brad Cox. Yes, and, and I think... He should be the favorite. He'll probably be a pretty heavy favorite for Brad Cox. First mission is one of a few horses that has a win in a graded stakes race last time out for first mission. That was in the Ali Sheba and also won the Essex at uh, Oakland Park before that. First mission is one of several horses in this field that have very, very good re career records that rarely run a bad race and for for first mission only one time uh where that horse has not finished either first or second and is already a millionaire yeah yeah it's been a good start to the career and and, and first off on the betting uh yeah it uh, betters love uh, to bet go dolphin and cox and uh, i expect first mission to be pretty low as well in here uh coming off two big wins before that he really threw in a clunker in the Pegasus World Cup, and, and and like you said, a consistent horse, that's his only bad race. Uh, that was his only grade one race before this one. Five-length winner of the Essex, a four-length winner last time uh, when he uh, ran down that Japanese horse and pulled away in the stretch in the Ali Shiba. That was on a sloppy track. Now he'll get a fast track here. Uh, it looks like for sure on Saturday at Churchill Downs. Number three, uh, a horse we've seen a lot in these stakes over the years, but uh, I think the best days might be past this six-year-old son of Ron Happy. Happy American, sure to be a long shot on Saturday. Yeah, uh, certainly not in the best form of his career. And actually, Brian, he has not won a race since January of 2023. Yeah, there's some good back class with Happy American. Uh, I thought his last race, it was a, uh, a strong allowance race, was an improvement from uh, races before that. But uh, you'd have to look back for about a year to see some really good races from Run American, including a Stephen Foster where he rallied into the picture. That was at Ellis Park last year. Getting back to the field, Matt, we'll see that the number four horse is Disarm. And I think Disarm is a very interesting horse in here. Uh, maybe a little bit like Doorknock. When Doorknock won the Fountain of Youth, we were like, 
yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't exciting the way he wanted. And certainly, Disarm's return to the races was not a uh, exciting performance at Churchill Downs. It was kind of slow all the way around the track. Disarm did what he had to do to win, uh, but he'll have to be better here. I think he will be better than that allowance win, which was his first race since the Travers. Yeah, and and you got to go back and look at the 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 career record of Disarm. Another one that uh, uh, rarely runs a bad race. Uh, eight times in the top three and 10 career starts you mentioned a second in the travers but if you keep going back brian you're going to find a win in the mat win at churchill down you're going to find a really nice fourth place finish in the kentucky derby at churchill downs a third in the lexington a second in the louisiana derby plenty of nice performances to to, to grab onto if you like disarm and you know i think maybe the odds will be uh, in your favor if you do support him yeah i think third choice is very reasonable on disarm and with first mission getting a lot of money i think everybody else will have uh, pretty fair pretty square odds in here disarm of course is not a gun runner we think of gun runners getting better with age disarm certainly could as you said he ran all those good races including the fourth in the kentucky derby last year at churchill downs a second uh in his final race of last year in the travers so uh disarm was close last year i i I, I do wonder if he uh, likes to win against good horses because his only stakes win came in that mat win, which, as you said, was at Churchill Downs. So uh, a feather in his cap. He'll need to move forward from his return performance, but certainly I think a horse who's a big threat in here. Number five it is an interesting long shot. You don't usually say that about Pletcher and Irad Ortiz when they team up, but uh, number five, Dreamlike, just has not got it done in in, in uh, winning races at least he's one for nine matt but this horse has shown enough good performances where i think he will break through sooner or later and he gets an interesting uh, uh equipment change here as he gets blinkers on for the foster yeah and just like we did with uh disarm we can go back and look at the record of dreamlight and find some some very good performances uh, he finished third uh in the blame stakes recently uh, but then going back to being a th uh, three-year-old he was second in the P pennsylvania derby and a very 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 close third in the wood memorial yeah he was only beaten ahead in the wood memorial as a maiden uh he was a rallying second to another cox Godolphin horse uh, that was Saudi crown in the Pennsylvania Derby, the grade $1 million Pennsylvania Derby last year. So he has on occasion looked like a, a performer who could win a big race someday, but he just hasn't done it yet. One for nine again. Um, last time was a disappointment. I thought when he was third beaten three lengths in the blame over the track. Uh, I, I think that's a big reason why Pletcher goes blinkers trying to find a little bit more focus for dreamlike. And if he does, and and he's shown he can rally dreamlike is again an interesting long shot in here classic causeway uh like happy american maybe even more so than happy american has some back class to him that it's just a matter of what he wants to do he's he's made trips overseas he's been on turf he's been on dirt he's been uh middle distances he's been uh two of his last three races came at a mile and a half uh last time he had some trouble he he's a long shot in here but there is there is certainly back class on number six classic causeway yeah classic causeway has been all over the place i mean that uh, not just in his uh, uh, uh finishes in his past performances but all over the country all over the world uh racing you mentioned the name of classic causeway around my friend andy serling and he just gets crazy because he thinks uh classic causeway is one of them has been one of the mismat most mismanaged horses uh with talent uh, uh recently um this guy uh, who is trained by kenny mcpeak has not had a win since he went on to the turf and won the belmont derby as a three-year-old like you mentioned he ran three times in great britain he's gone long he's run well on the dirt but it's been a long long time since uh he's found the winner circle 
Yeah, he also has a little bit of speed, and and I bring up the Timeform U.S. pace projector for us to take a look at. There you see blinkers on number five, Dreamlight, kind of in the middle of the uh, pace. Classic Causeway has some speed. Last time he had some trouble uh, early in that in that race where he didn't do a whole lot, so he might show some more speed. The next horse we're going to talk about, Kings Barnes, also has some speed, number seven. Uh, but they show the leaders as number nine, Skippy Longstocking, we haven't talked about yet. And number two, First Mission, who could be the two favorites in here. So I think it'll be an interesting uh, development as far as how the pace plays out because no one is a speed ball. But on the other hand, Skippy Longstocking, First Mission, uh, Kings Barnes, Classic Causeway, they all have pretty good tactical speed and are uh, uh, prone to take the lead if need be. Yeah, and, you know, I also want to point out in that pace projector, we don't have that red fast pace button that so often we see in big stakes races with talented horses. So, uh, um, yeah, they there are a couple of horses that seem to be the likely ones to be out front, but I, I'm going to see it interestingly how this race will actually be run. Yeah, exactly, Matt. I, I don't think it's going to be a, a real fast early pace, but on the other hand, I, I think it's really interesting to see who exactly will be on the lead, who will be second and third, or will it be three horses across the track going into the first turn there at Churchill Downs? The pace will uh, certainly tell a story here. Number seven, Kings Barnes, is one of the horses who could be out there. Four-year-old son of Uncle Mo, another uh, from the barn of Todd Pletcher. We talked about Dreamlike already. Kings Barnes, you mentioned a very good record for first mission. It looks pretty similar to Kings Barnes records, not five of eight uh, lifetime for this Louisiana Derby winner last year. He faded out of the picture in the Kentucky Derby. We didn't see him for a while, uh, but he's been first in two out of three this year, although he did get run down last time in the Pimlico special. Yeah, uh, so we've talked about that second in the Pimlico Special. Uh, he is the winner of the uh, Ben Ally Stakes, a grade three, and he was a good second in the Pegasus World Cup to start out the year. Again, you know, trained by Todd Pletcher, uh, I think we'll get uh, 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 pretty decent odds for a horse with the kind of record this one has for Todd Pletcher. Yeah, it, it, it's it, one thing I see that jumps out at me. When he won the Louisiana Derby, he was very impressive. When he won the Ben Ali, uh, two starts back at Keeneland, uh, very impressive wins. But then when the pressure gets to him a little bit, I, I wonder if he holds up to the pressure. It's one of the reasons he won't be one of my top picks in this race. But uh, certainly a dangerous, talented horse is Kings Barnes, the number seven. Getting back to the field map, number eight, I think, is a horse who uh, often gets um, uh, downplayed to how good he really is. And, and maybe I did it a little bit with with uh, the odds there, the horse center odds at 20 to 1, because Steel Sunshine runs a lot of good races. Yeah, I know he was well beaten last time, but first missing, but that was on a sloppy track. Steel Sunshine likes to rally. I just think he's a horse who could make sense to play underneath for a horse who runs a ton of good races. Yeah, absolutely does, Brian. He was also third in the Ghost Sapper and and was the winner of the Gulfstream Park Mile, which is a grade two. So, you know, he's won some uh, won some good races and is frequently uh, nearby in the finish. Yeah, he 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 often runs good races and he and he might be unlucky only to have one. Uh, recent stakes win at Gulfstream, but that Gulfstream Park Mile was a nice rallying win for Steel Sunshine, who's a stakes winner in Kentucky before uh, over at Ellis Park. Number nine is a horse we haven't talked about yet, and we need to, because Skippy Longstocking is, uh, in a lot of ways, he's the most accomplished horse in this race, Matt. He has had six graded stakes wins uh, in, in the last uh, less than 24 months. Skippy Longstocking has yet to break through in a grade one. He All of those stakes wins are grade two, grade three. But if you look at the son of exaggerators uh, last five races, four of them, four of them, Matt, are really good. The Charlestown Classic win, uh, a third behind Cody's Wish and his Wish and National Treasure in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Uh, and then more recently, uh, nice wins in the Challenger at Tampa Bay Downs, and the Oaklawn Handicap might have been his best race yet last time. 
Yeah, I agree. And Brian, uh, uh, you mentioned those two recent wins. This is the this is the first time that Skippy Longstocking has ever won two races in a row. So I guess I guess after that, after getting pulled up in the Pegasus World Cup, not too long before that, uh, uh, he's bounced back and maybe in the best form of his career for trainer Safi Joseph. Eight career wins. Uh, the leading money winner in this field with over $2.2 million earned uh, for a horse for a horse for trainer, Safi Joseph, that has done some good running away from Gulfstream Park. And, and often with Joseph, his horses pile up the winds on the Florida track. But uh, Sk Skippy Longstocking uh, has run well at a lot of different places. Oh, absolutely. He's run well all over the country. Uh, uh, even that Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile last year out in California was a strong performance. Again, six-time graded stakes winner. One thing I mentioned, or should mention with Skippy Longstocking is uh, he was pulled up because of the heat got to him a little bit in the Pegasus World Cup. Uh, his only uh, pro poor performance, obviously, was a poor performance as he was pulled up and he was actually walked onto an ambulance. Uh, he was soon found to be fine. But we are expecting a very hot day here in Louisville on Saturday. So something to keep an eye on with Skippy Longstocking, one of the uh, major players in the $1 million Stephen Foster. Uh, the next race we're going to talk about on that card, we could talk about several others. And even a Sunday race came up really nice um, uh, at Churchill Downs. But uh, the one we decided on was the Florida Lee, which uh, I'm a little surprised it's not a grade one race, actually. It's a grade two, half a million dollars Matt, it's uh, also nine furlongs. A little bit earlier on that Saturday card at Churchill Downs, the uh, Florida Ripley will go off a race eight. We only got six fillies and mares that entered the Florida League. Half a million dollar race, but all six are very good. And uh, let's start from the rail. Free Like a Girl, Matt, is a, a granddaughter of Monnie's. Uh, you don't see a lot of L deals out there. She's a daughter of L deal, a Louisiana bred who's won 17 times. In fact, she's already run seven races this year. You don't see that a lot. She's finished in the money in all seven. And she's starting to show herself in open and company. And she's starting to show herself off pretty well. Two starts back, grade one, Apple Blossom. She finished third behind Adair Manor, one of the leaders of the division. Last time, she was second in the grade one La Troyenne behind Idiomatic. Uh, there, there's plenty to like against the mayor who I think people still don't on a nas the national uh, uh, scale uh, recognize her as one of the top uh, females in the country. But but maybe we should start doing that. Yeah, oh, for sure, Brian. Uh, those those last couple performances in grade one races, big, important grade one races, the second in the La Troyenne, the uh, third in the Apple Blossom is a significant uh, 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 move up in in uh, class and in performance for this the horse that uh, clearly likes to win and rarely one runs a bad race 34 times brian finishing in the top three yeah seven for seven this year i think she's better than ever now as a five-year-old and um yeah, one you can't throw out in here another one you can't throw out certainly shotgun hottie the two matt shotgun hottie was looking pretty good last summer at monmouth park uh winning a couple of stakes in a row uh, stakes in a row nicely was the daughter of gun runner and uh, another gun runner we're talking about probably getting a little bit better with age we've known about shotgun hottie for a while with talent uh running in some big races not breaking through in a big race necessarily but she can look good on occasion, and she looked good last time winning at Pimlico. Yeah, that's for sure. And here we are again, Brian, uh, with trainer Cherie DeVoe. And uh, uh, she, I guess DeVoe had a pretty good uh, weekend up at uh, uh, Pimlico when uh, we mentioned uh, Pyrenees in the Stephen Foster rundown. But here we are again with DeVoe. Um, uh, getting a win in the DuPont Stakes at Pimlico. I think, you know, uh, this horse is back to the best uh, form of her career. Yeah, Shotgun Hottie coming off a big win. Interestingly, she was 0 for 3 in Arkansas at Oakland Park, not breaking through against top horses there. 
Um, I wonder if she's just going to be the grade two, grade three type more than the grade one type. I know, yeah, I know this is grade two, but I think there's grade one quality in this Fleur de Lis. Um, or does she just get better as she races more and the weather warms up? It, it looked like she was getting better last year and that DuPont, as we said, was a big performance. Uh, next on the list, Matt, is uh, who the, 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 the Philly I expect to be the longest shot on the board. Number three, Tax. Brian Hernandez Jr., if you remember last year, um, she was an impressive winner of the Adair Manor over uh, good fillies like uh, Adair Manor and, and Hoosier Philly there at uh, Pimlico as well. That was last year's Black Eyed Susan. Um, she was unable to win another big one last year, and she hasn't been able to win a big one this year, but she's two or three this year, coming off a nice win at Churchill Downs. Um, I think... I think there's a chance that this is she's she's one of two fillies in this race who can really rally and pick up horses. Sometimes she's closer to the lead. Uh, I think this might be a good spot where she can rally because I think four of the six horses want to be pretty close to this early pace. And, and Tax coming off a nice allowance win at Churchill Downs, she interests me a little bit. Yeah, a couple of nice allowance wins uh, recently. Had an allowance win at Oakland Park already. Uh, fifth place finish in the Apple Blossom, and we already mentioned that uh, Free Like a Girl uh, obviously then finished ahead of her in that race. Yeah, and I, I, that was Tax's second start of the year. I think Tax could do better, but you know it's hard to discount Free Like a Girl, who was third in the Apple Blossom, Shotgun Hottie, who was fourth in the Apple Blossom, and Taxed, who is fifth in the Apple Blossom. Uh, as we get to the next source, Matt, who I really think people are going to just bet with bushels of money on Saturday. Her name is Scylla. Uh, Scylla, of course, is a regally, regally bred daughter of Tappet. Uh, her brood mare is Close Hatches, who is a champion, consistent, excellent mare of uh, a decade ago or so. Close Hatches has now produced horses like and they're all they're all full brothers and sisters. Tacitus, a major winner here in the United States, and the exciting winner of the Ohio Derby last week's Ohio Derby gotten down. Scylla's a full sister to both of them, and Scylla has flashed potential in her career. But the last two, both at Churchill Downs, look like she's ready to make a run, perhaps at an Eclipse Award this year. Yeah, could be Brian, and I agree that this horse is gonna. Uh get uh, bet heavily. Why not? Because we're talking about Bill Mott here. We're talking about uh, uh, two nice victories over the Churchill Downs track with that allowance and then a win in the grade three uh, Shawnee, the, 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 you know, the, the bloodlines. Uh, you don't have to be a big pedigree uh, expert to know about those bloodlines uh, with Tappet and Close Hatches. Yeah, and she looked the part of something very good in the last two at Churchill Downs. She's three for three at Churchill Downs. She might love this track. As we look at the time form U.S. pace projector, we'll see she is uh, projected to be close. Uh, they have five horses actually close, uh, and, and it's a contested pace. No fast pace button there, Matt, but a contested pace with several that want to be on or near the lead, including... Zajera on the outside, uh, Shotgun Hottie, Free Like a Girl. I would throw Scylla into that because I don't think she can let anybody get too far ahead as the heavy favorite in here. I'm hoping Tax, the three, who's pretty close, is a little farther back. And Occult, uh, who's another one who can show tactical speed but can also rally uh, a little farther back on the U.S. pace projector. Matt, uh, what about Occult? Occult is a... Uh, Kind of a hard one to figure out. Uh, on her best, she's quite good. But uh, last time uh, she was beaten at odds on, there were some good mares in that Serena song. I, I think I think part of the reason she was bet so low is because she had a very good sloppy track performance uh, before that. But she was beaten at low odds by Kathleen O last time at Monmouth Park. Yeah, uh, and as you mentioned, Brian, that was a very nice field uh, in that Serena song. But uh, if we go back to her performances as a, a three-year-old, we're going to find some good ones, but uh, we've got a third place in the Mother Goose at Saratoga. We've got a third place in the Cotillion uh, at Philadelphia Park. Those, those are our top races 
for three-year-old fillies. So, I mean, she's run against as good competition as any horse in this field. Yeah, just about. And, and and she hasn't broken through at the high level. The highest level has the uh, Chad Brown trained daughter of Into Mischief. Uh, but then you look at that Monmouth Oats where she won by more than 10 lengths and you wonder how good she could be. Um, only one race this year and it was one of those races where, okay, it wasn't bad, but is she going to move forward this time or is she going to get beaten in top competition again? A cult is uh, a little hard to figure out. Zajira on the... Uh, uh, on the other hand, Matt, is pretty darn consistent. She's won half of her 12 lifetime starts. In fact, last fall, Zajera was going as good as any three-year-old filly in the country with three nice, impressive uh, stakes wins in a row, including uh, Churchill Downs and in New York. Uh, this uh, daughter of Nyquist is a four-year-old filly. Uh, of course, last year was her three-year-old season. She was good as a two-year-old as well. She's 0 for 2 this year for trainer Phil Bauer as a four-year-old, uh, but after uh, running a poor race, in the slop in the La Troyenne. She uh, showed more of her old self last time, went second behind Scylla in the Shawnee. Yeah, and 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 if in fact that second in Shawnee is an indication that she's going to move back to the kind of form we saw last year, uh, that'll be, uh, 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 that'll make her a real contender in here, considering that last year uh, she won five out of six starts, including that Mother Goose uh, that, uh, a cult ran in. Yeah, yeah, she was really good last fall with Zijera. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if she is, in fact, getting back to that top form of last year. But uh, Scylla beat her last uh, last time pretty easily. And uh, that's the reason I think Scylla is going to very well could be under even money in this good Florida Lee field, Matt. So it's, uh, I don't know, it's a field where all five horses, the other five horses behind, besides Scylla, uh, have a lot to like. And, and to, to swallow maybe four to five odds on Scylla could be a little bit hard to, hard to swallow, if you will. Uh, let's get to our top picks here in these two big races at Churchill Downs. We'll start with the Foster. And of course, we'll, as we always do, we'll start with Matt Shipman. Sure, Brian. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the Foster has got uh, a really good field. For the most part, a very evenly matched field. Horses that uh, you know show up uh, almost all the time. So it's, it's a really hard race for me to separate uh, s- some of these contenders. I am going to avoid the probable heavy favorite first mission. Although I must say that he is certainly the horse to beat in, in the, in the foster, but I'm going to look for a little bit better price. I'm going to look at Skippy Longstocking for that price. Uh, we know how many times he has run well and at, at how many different tracks. Um, and with the fact that he has now won two races in a row, something that he's never done before, I, I, I'm going to take that as a big positive, Skippy Long stocking for me. Yeah, and I landed on the same horse, Matt. I, I, I think he'll probably be the second choice in here, but I think it'll be uh, pretty good odds for a second choice in here because I think first mission is a clear favorite. And uh, I'll tell you what, in a, in a big race like this, I trust Skippy Long stocking just a tad more than first mission. They have similar running styles, but I love his Oakland uh, – Handicap win last time. It was a big performance. He's good at nine furlongs. He's he's got the outside post. The heat worries me a little bit, honestly. But uh, Skippy Longstocking, I did think of Disarm because I think Disarm can move forward in this spot. Uh, I even thought of Dreamlike as a, as a longer shot. But uh, I went with Skippy Longstocking as well. A really nice horse who I'd like to see get his first Grade One win on Saturday. The Florida Lee. It looks like we're also trying to beat the favorite, Matt. Yeah, certainly am doing that. And and uh, you mentioned that uh, that Scylla is going to be a heavy heavy favorite, deservedly so probably for uh, for Bill Mott. But I'm going to take a shot. I'm going to go with the hot trainer. I'm going to go with Shotgun Hottie out of the barn of Cherie DeVoe. Uh, um, she's she's winning at a high percentage at Churchill Down. She also won one of the stakes races at Churchill last weekend. So shotgun hottie yeah, for you me. Got, you got to like those gun runners. And shotgun hottie could be on the verge of a very good year coming off that win at Pimlico 
uh, Shotgun Hadi, interesting. Uh, uh, like I said, a lot of interesting fillies in this race. Silla, the, those three races at Churchill Downs scare me, but like I said, four to five is too low against this field. She has to prove it. So I'm uh, I'm going to take a shot with some odds here because I, I, I like, I, I think Free Like a Girl and Shotgun Hadi and Silla and Zajera are all going to be on or near the pace. I, I think it's going to be a little crowded up there. So I think Tax and Occult might have a slight tactical advantage coming from off the pace. Um, occult is dangerous as well, but Tax is, is longest shot on the board. And, and, and I think she's better than people realize. And I think we saw that a little bit last year when given the chance to rally. I'm hoping BJ Hernandez Jr. can uh, take her off the pace, relax her early and come running down the stretch. Longest shot on the board for me in the Florida League. That's taxed. All right, Matt. Uh, big day at Churchill Downs. Let me uh, let me know who your top. Uh, uh, your, I'm sorry, your final uh, your final words for the day here on Horse Center. Yeah, again, it, it's fun to take Horse Center around to uh, the big race days uh, from track to track, uh, as we did at Thistledown uh, last weekend. We're at Churchill Downs now. Uh, I'm, so enjoy the racing uh, in, in Louisville. And as always, thanks for watching our show. Yeah, thank you for watching our show. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, we appreciate you doing that. Give us a thumbs up, uh, put a comment in, turn on your notifications so you don't miss any more shows. I want to also thank Candace Curtis, of course, for the race graphics, our friend in the home office there in Louisville as she uh, uh, brings us race graphics every week. Derby Wars, the best contest site out there as our sponsor. And of course, Timeform US for the pace projectors we use during the show. All right, Matt, well done. Another big week. This one at Churchill Downs. We'll be back in a week. Uh, looks like we might be talking about Indiana next week, Matt. So uh, you have that to get ready for. Indiana Derby and Indiana Oaks in a week. Until then, good luck. We'll see you soon right here on Horse Center.